Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Now today's workout is going to be 15 minutes long. We're going to do a four minute warm up and then we're going to row for 15 minutes. And this may be the first time you've really pushed up to that 15 minutes and so therefore we're going to hold this down at 20 strokes a minute at a low intensity just to get your body used to spending 15 minutes on the rowing machine. So we're looking at around about 5 out of 10 effort which is kind of our warm up pace. It's that one where it feels like your breathing's going up, your heart rate's going up but actually it's not that tough you're just about moving, all right? And this really is helpful, trust me, okay? So, uh, before we get into our 15 minute row, we have to do that four minute warm up, and of course, we have to set up our machines first. Hopefully yours is always set up the same, but we have to kind of get in and get it set up. So on an Averon, that means we want to set our resistance first. Now, if you don't know the kind of resistance to set it for yourself, you might want to experiment a little bit, but what you're looking for is that you get a nice feel from the stroke, you feel you're engaging with the machine, but it doesn't feel like you have to heave against it, and it also doesn't feel like you're rowing through air. And if you're using a constant set to with the Averon app, then the same goes, same kind of description for how you set your drag factor to, okay? You want a nice feel, but you don't want it to be too tuggy against it, but also not too light, all right? A good guide for both of them then is, on the Concept 2, I will set my drag factor to 130, which on the clean machine leaves the lever round about 5, alright? So just set your lever to 5, too low isn't a problem, too high is a problem, and then you can check up uh, info about drag factor afterwards. On the Averon, I will normally do like a tough row round about 12, but a row like today, I've got it set to 9, alright? Just to keep it nice and low intensity, just to let my body build up. Next up, we have to set our foot stretcher height, and what you're looking for is a position where you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably. If you're set too high, it can get a bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can actually go scooting past. And what that does is it sets, sends your backside out behind you and you lose power, all right? A good ballpark starting point here is that the strap covers the bottom lace of your shoe, which should be the balls of your feet, okay? And then from that point, you can then adjust for your own comfort, right? Don't listen to me, make sure you're comfortable, okay? So, we can finally get into our four minute warm up. Sorry, loads of talking today. Um, so we're gonna do this at a nice low intensity, at around about 20 strokes a minute. I just want you to start your body moving, all right? I don't want you to worry about intensity. I just wanna make sure that you get your body moving. But I'll talk to you when we get rowing, all right? So here we go then. Let's start our warm up in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So I kind of say that this warm up intensity when you start should be almost like you're just standing up from a squat. So say you've just like squatted down to pick something off the floor. Uh, a baby, a dog, some flower, whatever. <laughs> That's kind of the force that you're starting this warm up at, okay? Just enough of a push that you connect your feet up through your body through your arms and into your hands, okay? And that's kind of how we're gonna be rowing for the first minute of this warm-up. Then we're gonna increase slightly for a minute. Then we're gonna do two minutes worth of drills and that should at least have opened up your body enough for the 15 minute row we have ahead. After all, today's main session isn't particularly tough. It's just maybe slightly longer than you're used to. So. Let's just increase the push from our legs. And what you're searching for is that intensity where you now feel like you're putting some power into the machine, but it doesn't feel like you're working hard. I kind of always say the intensity is the same as if you were climbing up a constant flight of stairs, where it does become quite a lot of, well, not a lot, but it does become kind of, Exercise, let's call it. You start to breathe heavier, your heart rate goes up, but you don't have to stop. Or maybe you do. Maybe your phone goes, maybe something happens, but you know you don't have to stop. So it shouldn't feel tough, this intensity. And this is kind of what we're gonna be rowing our main session at today. So remember the pace that's showing in front of you right now, because we're gonna take one more stroke, then we're gonna take one foot out of the straps, put it on the ground, and then continue to row. Okay, so just rock over your toes and then back onto your heel. Use it as a pivot point to fulcrum, fulcrum point. Pivot, pivot. There's a Friends reference for you. Um, yeah, sorry. Friends reference blew my brain. <laughs> Right, let's swap feet. 
and then continue with exactly the same thing on the other leg okay so one foot on the ground come into the front push with the leg that's still strapped in and what this is doing really is helping you with your kind of opening up your hips to get into your right into your positions so you can slide in get that shin vertical at the front a lot easier with only one leg strapped in right last stroke here both legs back in or feet back in tighten up your straps legs straight roll with your back and arms so swing over your back pull in your arms out with your arms rock forwards with your back again back arms arms back back arms arms back you don't want it to be as robotic as i just said it should be nice and fluid everything should kind of meld into each other and now we're going to roll to the front of the machine forward tilt straight arms just push out with your legs don't worry here too much about power what i want you to concentrate on is just holding that forward tilt in the straight arms as you connect your legs so the moment you start to push too hard with your legs this drill can fall apart this is just about working on timing that your feet push at the same time that your hands connect can i squeeze one more in yeah just as we hit zero there we go so a simple warm-up before a simple session to be fair so have a quick drink keep on moving and i'll explain one more time what it is we're doing today Okay then, so quickly while I'm talking, just have a little bit of a wiggle of your backside, just reseat your seat, just to make sure and take that pressure off your sit bones that are kind of poking onto your glutes, that that's kind of most of the cause of discomfort, all right? So today's row is a really simple one. We're just gonna roll for 15 minutes at 20 strokes a minute, uh, and at a nice low intensity, pretty much what you were just doing that warm up at. Find your own intensity here, find what works best for you, um, and enjoy the 15 minutes. Like you never know, maybe you wanna do this a little bit harder. You don't have to follow me, um, it's just this is the progression of how I kind of go up through the zero to hero uh, series if this is what you're rowing this workout as part of this is just like a nice way to kind of bump you up to 15 to get you used to it before doing something else that's the only reason I'm doing it all right but I'll talk to you more about this stuff when we get into the main row because there's no point me talking to you sitting here when you're just kind of going could you get on with it please so let's get on with it all right so let's get into our main session in five four three two one let's go so Still continuing with 20 strokes a minute. That's one stroke every three seconds. You can either follow me and just row when I row in order to hold that 20 strokes a minute or look at the timer in front of you and just take one stroke every three seconds. Remembering that the rhythm you're trying to row at here is one second drive, two seconds recover. Okay, and that's how you launch power into the machine which isn't something we're really doing here okay we're not really powering into the machine we're keeping that intensity low but even at this rate and intensity if you can get used to a one second drive two seconds recover it will really teach you that this is how you get power into the machine when you do want to go fast that it's about pushing with the legs and really launching the power in there. And it's one of the toughest things really to try and explain to people that don't quite get what I mean. <laughs> so I spend quite a lot of time doing uh, online coaching where I'll do a web chat with somebody and I'll help them with their technique and really the toughest part is trying to get across this push with the legs. Trying to explain it in words. How you come into the front, forwards tilt, arms straight, and then by holding your arms straight and that forwards tilt, as you push with your legs, what happens is you're not using your back or your arms to generate any power at the front of the stroke but what they are doing is working as a conduit of the power from your legs because obviously the power has to get up and connect to the handle somehow but it's like 
I don't know if I, I've described it before as like if you were water skiing and then the handle would be out in front of you and then the line, I mean, this is a very niche way to describe it. <laughs> don't know how many water skiers are watching this, but, uh, but the line then goes to the boat in a nice straight line. And that's how the power from the boat connects to you to then pull you along the water. And it's the same idea with rowing, except you're pushing the power into the machine rather than being pulled along. I know it's not a perfect analogy, <laughs> but there's just so many different ways I can try and get it across. But the important part is those straight arms and the forward tilt of your back with a good posture, okay? That's the other thing. You don't want to have a rounded upper or lower back, like collapsed. You want to be sitting up on your sit bones with your hips kind of rolled forwards as you come into the front. And then what happens is as you push your legs, rather than feeling like you're pulling on the handle at the front of the stroke, it should just feel as though you're bracing against the handle. Again, I kind of call it, describe it like if you were hanging from a pull-up bar. Okay, so you just jump up, grab the bar and hang there for 30 seconds. You're not pulling yourself up in order to hang there. You're, you, in, in order to stay there as long as possible, you kind of make sure your arms are straight and you hang off your tendons and bones. And that is how this should feel with your fingers hooked over the handle, not gripping it tight. With that forward tilt, arms straight, good posture, you then push your legs. And for as long as you can hold that forward tilt, which ideally, is at least half of the leg drive, that power just flows through your body uninterrupted by your arms or your upper body and gets into the machine. And then what happens is you swing your upper body from that forwards tilt to the backwards tilt and that adds in power that you would have lost if you didn't start with that forward tilt and then as you come to the back of the stroke when the legs are pretty much finished you then finish off the stroke by finally pulling with your arms and so there's so many things you could concentrate on when it comes to the stroke you could concentrate on pushing with the legs. You could concentrate on your posture, on holding that forwards tilt for as long as possible, or just thinking about not pulling until you get to the back of the stroke. Or really what is ideal is that you basically just spend 30 seconds to a minute concentrating on each part of that at first. So you just think, right, okay, arms straight at the front, straight pull, straight, straight pull, straight. You just think that for a minute and then you think forwards rock, swing, forwards rock, swing, forwards rock, okay? You just do that and by focusing your mind on very distinct elements. You can then 
get the improvements that you're looking for. Whereas the problem with trying to roll it all, especially if you're a new rower or if you're struggling to try and improve your technique. Like if you say you posted a video of you rowing and asked for advice, people love to help, me included. <laughs> So you'll get a list of like 10, 11, 12 different ways to improve your technique from all the different people that are trying to help. That just makes you snow blind. You're looking at it going, hang on, what do I tackle first? What's the most important thing to change here? And usually it's your posture and your backswing. They are the two things that most people struggle with getting right. I mean, the same amount of people will also have an issue with pulling too soon from the front of the stroke, but that's an easy fix. You basically just don't pull from the front, especially if you're on something like this Averon that the big monitor in front of me is a fantastic reflection or gives a fantastic reflection of me rowing it's great if you're a narcissist this machine just get to look at yourself all, <laughs> all the time like hey look at me straight arms but that's the point is that you can come into the front make sure your arms are straight and you can see that your arms are straight and you can see the point when you pull but posture and your back tilt is a lot harder to really kind of get right unless you have someone standing next to you smacking you on the head with a <laughs> feather duster every time you get it wrong so that's why they are kind of the first things to try and address because they also have the biggest knock-on effect to the rest of your stroke as well and after all the whole point of talking technique is to make sure you get the best workout possible this isn't about I'm not trying to turn you into a Oxford rower prep you for a day on the head of the Charles in Boston or whatever I'm just trying to make sure that when you sit on this machine the workout you're trying to give yourself is the best workout possible and so the best way to make sure you get all of your muscles firing and you get the all over body workout that you're looking for just to roll with a good technique and so that's why I constantly talk technique it's really trying to get that across every now and then I'll make a video and I'll start off by kind of thinking you know what I'm not going to talk technique today but I just feel for that one person that loads up one of my workouts and it's the first time they've ever been on a rowing machine and there's me talking about spaghetti bolognese and Van Halen and my family and things and they're like, who's this guy? So what I tend to do is front load my rows by talking technique and then time allowing, that's when I start to get a bit tangential start talking about dinner plans and things which come to think of it I'm going out for dinner tonight Ooh, the Italian kitchen in Glasgow I'm off to tonight once once you have to pre-order so I already know what I'm having a nice bruschetta followed by where's the bruschetta oh, come on. Uh, uh, risotto and then chocolate compote 
to finish. That'd be nice. I'm going out with work friends. Going out for a nice dinner. <laughs> it's, listen, if you don't care about my dinner plans, then <laughs> we're going to have a rough time together. If you don't like my dinner plans, if you don't like my dad jokes, then you might want to just put on Spotify <laughs> and uh, listen to something else. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, but anyway, quickly just back to, I've got two minutes left of this road today. See, if nothing else, I hope you'll agree that just listening to me kind of waffle away, chat away to you about technique and stuff, as long as you tune in to just kind of the noise of my voice, if not actually listen, like hang off every word, you should find that much like listening to a podcast or something, time just flies by. The difference being, every now and then you'll tune in to what I'm actually saying with regards to technique. And you might suddenly hear me say, straight arms at the front, at which point you'll go, oh yeah, yeah. Forgot about that and you can then kind of help your technique again. So, and really, that's what my entire row along thing has always been. I don't really have delusions of adequacy when it comes to thinking I'm creating the next pool of world-class rowers, but what I hope I am doing is helping people enjoy their time on the machine and kind of get through a workout that otherwise they might not have done. Like maybe you've never rode 15 minutes solidly before, and this is the first time you've ever done it. And wow, well done. And hopefully it's just been me just muttering away to you that's got you through this and that it's just disengaged your brain because you're capable of more, trust me. It's your brain that tells you to stop. Last stroke. I mean, that was 15 minutes. And I could go on and on and on, and often I do. <laughs> so anyway, do keep doing some light rowing if you wish. I'll say goodbye really quick, don't worry. Um, just to keep moving. And then depending on what you're doing next, you could either do a proper cool down, you could go do some weights, you could do another rowing session. Maybe you want to go back to like my five minute one, add that as a little kind of coda on the end of it. It's entirely up to you, okay? So. Hopefully you enjoyed that, it was 15 minutes. Hopefully it's expanded your horizons, the amount of time that you can spend on the machine. And then you can then look ahead to the, the next one will be like 20 minutes, if that's what you're doing, or there's a part two to this 15 minute workout where we do it slightly different, but it's still 15 minutes. And that will build up your time and experience. And once you get up to that 20 minute stage, really you're capable of everything, okay? Once you can row for 20 minutes, it just becomes just rowing a little bit longer each time. And it's just about kind of your brain not getting bored and stuff, which hopefully I can help with, okay? So I really hope that you enjoyed today's row. I know I did. Um, bit of a mistake keeping the hoodie on, to be honest. It's, it's rather moist, let's say. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to go take this off and go and go do some resistance training, go for a run and stuff. So thank you so much for joining for this one. The last thing to say then is just to add in the, the hashtag to say squeaky shoes. Because my lovely new shoes... I'm making a hell of a racket on the, on the foot strap. So I do hope that didn't happen through uh, today's row. But yeah, squeaky shoes. Um, and people go, what? Why? What? So yeah, so thanks once again for joining me. I will see you in a future video. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Be well. Bye-bye. <laughs>